51, epilogue. Goodbye and good luck struck the sand and the moon to the fisherman lost on the land. He stands alone at the door of his home with his long-legged heart in his hand. The Ballad of the Long-Legged Bait by Dylan Thomas. In the embrace of an ancient land, thrust up by the titanic forces that submerged Atlantis, creating the great tsunami in his dream, in his little falling down shack by the beach in Hanalei, where he fell in love with Laura, accompanied by the song of the sea, always the pacing, ever-changing sea, David will begin a lifetime of healing. Again and again, he will experience new sensations of physical feeling as they surge up from his unconscious. Each time our capacity to become fully human will amaze, and he will wonder why he hadn't known all the things that arise within him his whole life. Finally, he will come to believe that some part of us does when we allow ourselves to wake to it. The waker will encounter many emotions while lying day after day, inert in the hot sand. Now that he can tolerate them, memories return at their leisure to be filed for future exploration. He has plenty of time now, plenty of time. One perfect morning, one of those insights that will become common in years to come plays. David sees that in spite of his history, he will become a photographer, renowned for the humanity and empathy of his work. He sees he will find a woman who will love him, learn he can accept that love, marry and have children, who will give him grandchildren. He sees himself doting on them, and except for the sometimes uncontrollable rages that will spring from his infant damaged brain, he will be a decent parent. Nothing will harm them. Yet should you ask, his children will have the usual complaints about their father. No one will know his true story, at least not from him. That afternoon, when the mood ceases, David picks up his long board, carries it to the lapping water's edge, and pushes out through the warm shore break. His arms feel powerful. The sun bakes his smooth, unmarked back, shoulders, and neck, and the familiar sandy wax against his chest comforts as the big gun's wide belly skims the chop. Moving out, the waves grow intense. When he gets hammered, slammed 20 feet under like a rag doll, he surfaces, sputtering and laughing. The current sucks him sideways, and soon his shack becomes tiny, disappearing into the palms. It's a long paddle under an impossibly bright blue sky. Buffeted by fierce incoming sets, he laughingly surmounts in the water that is his friend. Finally, shoulders burning, winded, David sits outside astride his 10-foot 1967 Dewey Weber performer, carved by the little man before he was born. The time of exile and healing has just begun. And in months, his lungs will catch up with his ambition. Moving gently with the indifferent sea, gentling his breath, his intense green-blue eyes study the calm, rippling surface that drifts off, joining the sky. Nothing moves on the ocean's face but shards of the sun. Many miles north, deep under tons of water, the earth's brittle crust wakes and stirs, a fissure slicing 10 miles toward the core, under enormous pressure for thousands of years, slips a few inches apart, then in moments a foot more. Liquid magma, boiling at over 1,200 degrees Celsius, begins oozing its steady way to the surface. A new island is joyously forming, heading for the sun. Murdering countless sea creatures, a pyroclastic spume suddenly bursts from the seabed. Meeting cold water, it creates an explosion of superheated steam that shoves a 35-mile-wide, 700-foot-thick plate of ancient sedimentary rock onto its side. The deep sea rushes into the displacement, bringing with it tons of water from halfway to Japan. On the surface, ripples spread in every direction, at first tiny, 
than growing strong. David has no knowledge of the cataclysm deep in an ocean indifferent to his presence. Many minutes later, far out, something infinitely small stirs. Only a hawk-eyed wavesmith would notice. As in his dream, a great planet-deforming hump rises. Outside, beyond the lineup, a rare giant quietly moves inland. David waits, deciding. There is not much time for the growing monster sliding over the seabed at over 100 miles an hour quickly closes 